excited for a potential round one playoff preview on Monday night in the NHL. Welcome in, guys, to Puck Time here on Wager Talk TV. Happy Monday. We'll break down that game as well as the New York Islanders, Philadelphia Flyers, and Detroit Red Wings and Tampa Bay Lightning. A big night tonight in the NHL with a ton of meaningful games. It's also a throwback day here at wagertalk.com. We've got $9 Monday every single play. Every sport, guys, today only $9. No joke here on April Fools. I welcome in my co-host, Carmine Bianco. What's up, Carm? Andrew, uh, happy Easter to the two, to uh, you guys in the chat. And I'm sorry about that joke. It's an April Fools joke. Um, you got till noon to uh, apparently that's the rule, Andrew, with uh, April Fools jokes afternoon. Uh, hits you can no longer play those jokes it's noon where you are because you're an hour ahead but um there will be more shows including the playoffs including a saturday puck time this week which andrew and i will record on friday so plenty of action for you guys but today's show is uh, predominantly easter it's all eastern conference feel to it um islanders flyers wings lightning leafs and panthers Uh, Because I know the Leafs fans are out there yelling, we want Florida once again. And uh, (laughs) oddly enough, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get them tonight and you're going to get them in the playoffs in all likelihood as well too. Andrew, um, weekend weekend was great as far as family time. NHL on Saturday. My God, somebody in the chat, please tell me you guys hit some of those dogs. Some of those dogs. Uh, The Sharks going into St. Louis and winning for nothing. Um, they were plus 275. The um, Chicago Blackhawks upending the Philadelphia Flyers. The, the Hawks are doing everything they can to catch Anaheim, who are tanking, full boat tanking, um, for to to lose that that third spot. Andrew in the uh, draft. You know the top, the bottom three teams have the best odds of winning the um, the lottery draft. If you finish fourth. Uh, the odds drop off, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen fourth place team win the draft, Andrew. I think they can only move up to second. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. On I think that. so. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, so the Chicago, they go into Philly, they play, uh, or they play Philly, and they absolutely um, the Flyers just look flat. <laughs> I felt Tortorella was going to blow a gasket uh, behind the bench, man. But with that said. Uh, we got games to talk about, Andrew. So I'm going to talk about this Flyers Islanders game. It's only fitting that I talk about the Flyers and Islanders. Uh, the Flyers are minus 120 here. Um, you can find them 115 to 120 on the Wager Talk Live lines, which you guys, again, should always use. It's a free service, up to date odds as they change. The total sits here at five and a half. I'm staying away from the total, and I'll explain to you in a second why. Uh, because I don't know what I'm going to get from the Islanders. Islanders are even money right now. When you expect them to win, they lose. When you expect them to lose, Andrew, they win. I just cannot figure out this uh, Islanders team for the life of me. They go into Florida. They win 3-2. And then um, they lose to Tampa. They could have completed. I thought they had a chance to complete the Florida double. Uh, And then again, they beat the Winnipeg Jets. They lose to the New Jersey Devils on home ice. I can't get this team. What I do know is... They have the second highest in the East, the second highest percentage of games that go to overtime. So you know where I'm going with here. 31.5% of the Islander games this season have gone to overtime. And that is the problem. If you can't win in overtime, uh, you're dropping points. And this is why they're right now, they're on the outside looking in. The only team with more OT games in the Eastern Conference, the Boston Bruins with 25. But uh, 23 for the Islanders, even money. um, I'd want plus money here, even with the Flyers on a, um, a bit of a um, downtrend right now, losing four games. This is this is a, a, a true four-pointer, Andrew. But here's here in lies the problem. You got the Flyers on 75. You got um, Islanders got two games in hand, and they're five points back. So you would think win both games, and you're a point back, including the one tonight. Um, which is a true four-pointer. You still have a chance to make the playoffs if you leap, uh, leapfrog over Detroit. The problem lies with the fact that the Islanders only have 23 regulation wins, 28 for Washington, 28 for Philadelphia. 
If they finish in a tie, they're not making it into the playoffs because regulation wins. <clears throat> so when we talked about teams that could possibly pull their goalie, not forget about overtime, pull their goalie in a tie game late in the game, the Islanders fit that model because they need to win the game in regulation. They need to get the two points and keep Philly from getting any points in this game. And if you have the Flyers, you have to love the idea of, in a tie game, the team that uh, you're play, you're betting against pulls their goalie uh, in a tie game. It gives you just another chance to win. I, I'm going to take a one of those pizza flyers because this game is not making my card. I am going to take the draw in this game at plus 320 because the Flyers would be perfectly happy with this game going OT, pick up a point, and put another nail in the coffin of the teams that are below them, which are the Detroit Red Wings and the the New York Islanders. Draw plus 320. It's happened 31 and a half percent of the time for the Islanders this season. It could very well happen again. What are your thoughts on that one, Andrew? I love it, Carm. What a start to the show, man. Giving out a draw, some nice, uh, nice plus price there on that one. And this is really the time of the year to bet the draw. So I know a lot of people are very successful throughout the season with draw betting. But right now, as we approach the playoffs with every single point mattering so much, as you mentioned, it's a good game for the draw. Uh, but Carm, you know, I, I wrote this up as a free play, wagertalk.com, my profile page. And I started off by saying, I know we aren't supposed to catch falling knives. I know it can be dangerous. This Philadelphia team has recently lost to the Montreal Canadiens, the Chicago Blackhawks. They have not looked good lately. But what better team to snap out of the slump against? What better team to get back on track against than a New York Islanders team that's given up at least three goals in nine of their last 10 games? I think of this New York Islanders team in the past of being such a dominant defensive team, a team that was so hard to play against, would trap you in the middle of the ice, their goaltenders standing on their head. And, and right now, it's just not the same thing we're seeing from them. No matter who they play, no matter what building they're in, they're giving up chances. They give up goals. They take bad penalties. Their penalty kill hasn't been great. And you mention it. They're a team that has not really won a lot of close games. So if this game is tight checking, if this game does have the playoff feel, if it does go to overtime, you know which team I want my money on. And it's not the New York Islanders. I mean, those numbers you threw out, it's, it's amazing how many times they've been involved in close games, how many times they've gone to overtime, but come out on the wrong side of those games. So looking at the Philadelphia Flyers right now, at least for them compared to this Islanders team, in some of their games, you know, not against Montreal or Chicago, but when they have given up goals, they've still been able to score. So if, you know, if we look for a better defensive effort and a better goaltending effort, I think there's going to be an absolute terrible taste in the mouths of this Philadelphia team right now. I mean, when you drop a game, not once, but twice to a bottom feeding team, you get a day and a half break and you come back out Monday night, fresh week, a chance at home, and you want to hold on. They are just barely holding on to a playoff position right now, this Philadelphia team, Carm. I feel confident in this price. Again, it's dangerous to catch falling knives, but I also feel like the Islanders, they're a falling knife as well. So it's pretty much like, you know, you're, you're, you're picking between two teams that are not looking great right now, to, to say the least, and I'm going to take the home team. Andrew, I love it, man. That's a that's a bold move, Cotton. I I love it. You're like <laughs> the person on that wheel where they're just throwing the knives at them, and you're trying to dodge them because that's what it is <laughs> in trying to bet the New York Islanders or the Philadelphia Flyers. You are dodging knives, and it is. I had to put the game on this card for us to discuss, but it, it is crazy. You know, um, you know, one of the things, and uh, I just replied to someone in the live chat, which I think is tough, is we know what happened with the Philadelphia Flyers, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, their goalie having to, like Carter Hart having to leave uh, the team with what is going on, the investigation, the police thing, uh, and the World Juniors. We're not going to get into that. But it has squarely put the whole team on the shoulders of uh, of Urson. And you look at how many games he's played. He's very rarely had a night off. March 2nd, um, he, he gets the game off, and then he plays, uh, what, uh, five straight games, 
gets the 16th off three straight games, gets the sixth, uh, the 24th off another three games. The guy wasn't made to shoulder this much responsibility and this much workload for the team. And their other goalie is what? Uh, Felix Sandstrom, I believe. But you look at it, he hasn't looked good in, in goal. And it's just at some point, um, it deflates the team when the goalie isn't playing well and he's letting it in. Um, you can call him softies or he's letting in goals that he should stop. Uh, his save percentage the last three games, 792 against Chicago, 867 against Montreal. 778 against the New York Rangers. Andrew, I could slap pads on you and you would have uh, a goals against average, or sorry, a save percentage that is better than that. Um, it, it's, listen, we're going to see what we get tonight. Uh, if Urson's watching this one, he probably gets a shutout and, uh, and uh, one nothing in OT. <laughs> I'm fine with that. One nothing OT. Game goes to OT. I'm going to have some pizza and uh, and Urson gets you the, the win. You go with that? That's fine by me. It'll be a little bit sweaty, but it's fine by me as long as we both come out on top. You know how I am. I want us. I want us to all win and, and have success. And you're right. You know about Urson and the and the goaltending issue because I understand the issue. The, the, what's going on with Carter Hart is something that we don't want to talk about, but it has affected the team, and we can't deny that it's affected the team because what's happened was we saw Urson go on a huge run and play very well. But we all know what happens these days in the NHL when a goaltender has to play way too many too many games. It catches up to them, the fatigue factor. And if they go into the playoffs, and that's why they had to pick up somebody uh, that actually just came over from the KHL. Because if you go into the playoffs with a goaltender that's played way too many games recently, it's going to hurt you big time. And a lot of teams have seen that happen to them over the years, how important it really is to have uh, multiple goaltending options. That is for sure. But Carm, there, I'll be real with you. There weren't many teams and there aren't many teams in the NHL that I would probably bet, a, bet uh, take the Philadelphia Flyers to beat right now. The Islanders just so happen to be playing them tonight. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't eager. I wasn't running to the window trying to find a way to bet Philadelphia. It just, it just worked out tonight. But uh, let's move on to Detroit and Tampa Bay. We appreciate all of you guys for being here with us on Wager Talk TV. Guys, we are live on so many platforms, YouTube Shorts Live, Instagram. We're even making some action on TikTok as well. So you guys make sure you find us all over the place, Wager Talk TV. Let's talk about Detroit and Tampa Bay. We've got minus 190, the home team here. Another divisional matchup, um, Detroit. Are they live dogs tonight, Carm? Can they play shocker, or does the home team keep on rolling? Well, the, uh, they're always going to be a live dog. Uh, you know, Larkin back uh, a little bit better. You know, the, the game they lost in uh, uh, to Florida um, in OT, the shootout or whatever, it was, you know, those are points you need at this point. You know, they dropped that one. Uh, three games back, they lose that game to Washington. Uh, again, a game that goes to, uh, uh, into OT. Uh, those are points, especially against Washington, a team you're trying to, to catch. They have another game against Washington. I'm kind of hoping that the Wings stay in the playoff race because um, I'm considering making the trip out to uh, to see that game, Washington in Detroit, if there's um, a chance that they, they can catch him in the playoffs. I, I'd want to see that game. I think uh, it'll be an electric game. It's actually cheaper for me to travel to Detroit to, to watch the Detroit and Washington than it is to go 40 minutes south to Toronto to watch the Leafs play anybody. That's uh, the insane thing. Andrew, when I looked at this game, here's the, here's the problem with wanting to take Detroit in this game is they've lost nine straight road games. And I get it. Um, a lot of those were, you know, after the Larkin injury. Um, but still, it, it you know, we always talk about that next man up mentality and they just didn't have it. Um, um, I, I just don't know what, what, what's going on with this team on the road. They just don't carry their home form. When these two teams, when these teams play in, in in Detroit, Detroit has their number. They seem to beat them. And I remember one game. I think it was a, a year ago, or uh, I think it was a year ago. Uh, the shots on goal were something like forty-eight to seventeen uh, for Detroit against uh, against the Lightning. And the Lightning won that game three uh, nothing. Vasilevsky stood on his head in that game. Three of the last five games in Tampa have been won by Detroit. 
So maybe they're buoyed by that fact. I'm I'm going to go some. I'm going to go completely different angle here, much like the draw I took in the last one. I am going to take because Detroit's playing it's so terrible on the road right now. I'm going to take the Tampa team total, which is three and a half minus one thirty. Now they got to get the four goals to get this done. We know Tampa's scoring goals, but Detroit during that nine game winless run on the road they have allowed four or more goals in seven of those nine games um they may have to win one of those high scoring games like they did against tampa i believe earlier this uh this season i i see goals in this one but i don't want to take the over i'm going to take tampa team total over uh three and a half minus 130. The team total, Tampa Bay Lightning playing extremely well right now. And you got a team, like you mentioned, nine straight road losses for the Detroit Red Wings. It's amazing how a team can play so well throughout the season. And then once playoff time is just creeping in, they start to, to plummet. I understand, like you said, the injuries there that they've dealt with. But when it comes down to it, this Red Wings team has not looked the same over the last couple games here. And when I say the last couple games, well, 12 of their last... 13, they haven't looked the same because they've lost all of those games. They just have not looked like a solid team here, Carm. Um, you know, I, I understand, you know, the goals they're giving up. I, I can see the Tampa Bay team total. But for me, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to hope that uh, the Tampa Bay wins 5 nothing, uh, So you and I can both, <laughs> can both win and be successful. But uh, I'm actually on the under tonight. And I just think that right now with how dry the scoring has been, on the road for this Detroit team because it hasn't just been they're getting outscored, you know, 4-3, 5-4 in every road game. They're struggling to score. You know, they've become one of those teams that's only finding their offense at home as opposed to on the road. So, and looking at this Tampa Bay team, I know it's only been recently, but allowed one against New York, allowed one against Boston, two against uh, Anaheim. This is a team that I think might be rounding into playoff form. Vasilevsky stepping up, this team defensively, keeping teams to the outside. That is Tampa Bay hockey right now. And and you corrected me last week because you've been talking about them, but I still think the total masses in the hockey community have not been talking about this Tampa Bay team enough. They are getting ready for the playoffs, and whoever they play better be ready because it's going to be a tough battle for them. And uh, I think yeah. defense has a lot to do with it. Look at Detroit right now. Seven of their last eight games have gone under against the Atlantic division. And overall right now, this Tampa Bay team, especially at home, has played some of their best defensive hockey. So I'm going to rock with the under Carm overall. Uh, but I still hope we both can win. <laughs> it's, it's somewhat possible. <laughs> So, uh, Andrew, I, I'm cheering for, uh, you know, obviously I want my team total to hit, but I'm cheering for Detroit in the game. Um, it is it is not because I think they're going to win the game. It is, it, it's one of those games where you don't have money on it, so you, you pick a side. Uh, who do you want to win? Because a Detroit win keeps them in the playoff race and gives us more meaningful games to talk about over the last 17 days of this NHL regular season uh you know the funny thing is andrew you because you sent it to me uh guys here's you know tampa is uh, they've been playing well um by the way i know he's not watching it but prez tampa's not done tampa's not tired tampa has a good team and they're turning it on something they haven't done the last few seasons because they normally have a playoff spot sewn up but tampa is four points back of the toronto maple leafs right now uh for that number three seed in the Atlantic, and Tampa has the tiebreaker with 33 regulation wins to Toronto's 30th regulation wins. So we'll see what happens, um, whether they catch them or not. But you sent me this, which I thought was uh, was pretty funny. The Leafs, if they finish third in the Atlantic, they're going to face either Boston or Florida because those two teams are battling for the first and second spot. If the Leafs were to finish um, second, they would face one of those two teams. If the Leafs fall out of the top three and into a wild card spot, they're still going to face either Austin or Florida because <laughs> New York Rangers seem to be running away right now with uh, with the Eastern Conference and Carolina is just back of them. So it's amazing. I think it is, the writing's on the wall on who the Leafs are playing. It's going to be the Bruins or the aforementioned uh, and soon to be mentioned Florida Panthers, Andrew. 
That new playoff format, Carmen, is it, definitely a mystery. But uh, either way, it makes for a great first round. We can't wait for it. Uh, and we're going to have all the action, all the picks right here, Wager Talk TV, uh, as we do puck time all the way through the playoffs. And guys, again, I'll mention it right now, wagertalk.com live. You can get Carmine's uh, double pack of NHL plays, my best bet in the NHL as well as MLB. Just nine bucks. We're throwing it back today. Nine dollar Monday. Wagertalk.com. Carmine WT dot buzz backslash CB. Same for me with an AM at the end there. Get all of our plays today. Just nine dollars. But Carm, I feel like you might have saved the best for last in this one. I look forward to watching this game here. Uh, but this is actually my play of the night. So people can find out at wagertalk.com if I have a side total over under uh dog or fave in this one so what i'll do is i'll just go over a prop uh, i like actually maybe a couple props here and i'll start things off with john Tavares, uh under three and a half shots on goal florida and toronto of course here the game tonight this is a, a guy that's really stepped things up you know he's gotten a lot of flack because of the contract that he has right and i know that we've heard people mentioning that he's not contributing and not having a great season. Carm, the guy's still having a good season. He's still having a good year. He just probably isn't having a good year for a $10.5 million guy. And that's been the biggest issue. But his passing, his ability to create space, his kind of forechecking ability, and just having that veteran experience. But I'll tell you what, they're still setting his number at three and a half shots on goal every single game. Well, he's got under that total in seven of his last 10. The Florida Panthers, they're not playing the best right now. I can certainly see a chippy defensive playoff atmosphere tonight. I can't see John Tavares getting four shots on goal tonight. So I like that to the under three and a half shots on goal for John Tavares for a nice prop bet for tonight. And I also want to look at Sam Reinhart. Everyone talks about his uh, goals, Carm. How about the assists? The guy still passes the puck. He still creates plays out there on all the power plays. I know he's having a phenomenal career year as far as his goal scoring, but the assist mark, you get such a nice price on this as well. Passing it over to guys like Verhage, to guys like Kachuk. I think Reinhardt to get an assist is a really profitable wager tonight as well. So one bet on each team. And uh, also could could probably see a good night as far as the goaltending props as well. But Carm, uh, my favorite play on this game is up for grabs at Wager Talk. But uh, what do you have going for this game? You know, it was an interesting one. I always poke fun at the Leafs, Andrew. I'm not going to poke fun at the Leafs uh, in this game. Um, so Marner, and I talked about Marner missing a bunch of games. And I'm like, if he doesn't play... Uh, and this was last week. If he doesn't play in the game that night, if he wasn't on the ice, um, it's a bad sign because they're not telling you that there's something wrong with them. So what do they do this weekend? They put him on the uh, long-term injury reserve. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> um, for them not to uh, have him in the lineup right now, I don't know what um, how bad that injury is. They're going to need him at some point. But they played well defensively their last couple of games, uh, extremely well defensively. Samsonov's confirmed for tonight. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the Leafs goaltending issues, but if you remember back on January 1st, it was uh, the Leafs put Samsonov on waivers with the uh, notion of sending him down to the Marlies. He didn't, he wasn't going to play, but uh, he was going to work with the goaltending coach there. When they sent Samsonov down, his record was 5 2 and 6 with a 394 goals against average and an 862 save percentage. He was. Literally, it was like printing money, betting overs with Samsonov in goal. Anything but since his return. Since his return, Andrew, 15-4-1. and one, His goals against average, 2.43. His save percentage, 9-14. Um, he's assumed the responsibilities of the number one goalie. And even with Joseph Wall uh, playing... Um, you know, uh, games here and there. And I thought, I think people thought Wall comes back, he's going to be their, their playoff goalie. I think it has to be Samsonov. Uh, he's the starter tonight. He's confirmed. And you got Florida coming in, and Florida's taking money in the markets. It's opened at 120, went to 130 for Florida right now. You're getting plus money on the Leafs right now, and uh, plus money on the Leafs at home off of uh, two very good defensive games against a Florida team that 
despite getting the win against the Red Wings, have struggled a bit to score goals, um, but they're still playing well defensively. Uh, I'm going to take the plus money here. Uh, I, I'm bucking the trend of, I think, Florida just has Toronto's number. The Leafs did beat them earlier this season, 2-1 at home, and a similar game could be in the works here. I'm going to take the plus money with the Leafs in this one. All right, taking the dog at home. Maple Leafs on the money line. Carm, I just hope it's going to be a playoff atmosphere, man. I want to see some physicality. I want to see some some rough stuff. And uh, this may be a preview of the first round uh, playoffs. We're looking forward to a great week uh, on puck time here, guys. Getting ready for the playoffs. Some of these great matchups. Also, some single game videos. You can find those all uh, on Wager Talk TV, all throughout the YouTube channel. Also, the app as well on uh, the Apple Store, Play Store, uh, Roku devices, anywhere you can find us, Wager Talk TV. Carm, what do you have going tonight for clients, man? It's $9. I saw you had an NHL double pack. Uh, anything else up for grabs for your clients? Yeah, uh, yeah, just uh, the NHL one. A um, uh, couple of, uh, this week is uh, some great games and full cards. So we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of good games to discuss throughout the week. But right now, two plays, uh, actually three plays loaded up at Wager Talk. It was a two pack, but I added one more, which is the play I'm gonna give you on today's show. This is also a client play as part of that um, uh, two pack. So it's, which is now a three pack. You get it for nine dollars. You get the other two games. One of them is a four percent best bet. Um, really good run, 37 and uh, 37 and 14, I believe it is, 37, 14, 37 and 15 in NHL. That's a, a very good, profitable run for me. Uh, January 1st onwards has been really good uh, for clients. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to go a little different. It's been a different kind of day for me, um, Easter Monday kind of day. I'm going with a money line parlay, guys. I am taking the Edmonton Oilers at home in the part one of this parlay against the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis, come on, man. They uh, they choked against San Jose. Uh, they are done, as far as I'm concerned, as far as getting into the playoffs. Edmonton can still catch Vancouver for the number one seed in the, uh, in the Pacific. So six points back, two games in hand. Can't lose games like this. That's the league number one. League number two, New York Rangers. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, they crapped the bed against uh, Columbus. They've been doing it since that gun sold trade. Rangers playing lights out hockey, uh, even though they're coming off a two-game Western road trip. It was only a two-game Western road trip. They're home. Um, they rested uh, Shesterkin in, uh, in that second game. He'll be playing tonight. Um, plus 127 for parlaying these two teams. They're minus 200 and minus 195. Put them together. Take one, plug get one plus 127. Cash that ticket and we move on to Tuesday. I love it. It's been a unique day and we're wrapping it up in a unique way. But Karma, before I jump into my best bet, we've got a question for you from Instagram from uh, sjoyce90. Who do you want to play? And I'm guessing they're asking you uh, about the Leafs, Florida or Boston. Who do you think? Uh, or who do you want to see them play, and who do you think they should want to play? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it uh, quick, Andrew, uh, with this one. And thank you for the question. We really appreciate you guys dropping those questions, uh, not only in our live chat here uh, on YouTube, but also Instagram. The Leafs are better off playing this team tonight, the Florida Panthers. Uh, they got them last year in the playoffs, um, in the second round. And Florida was just uh, on a dream run. Um, they're not going to be caught off guard this time around. And they know what they're getting with Florida. If you play the Boston Bruins, I'm sorry, they're not getting, uh, it's not going anywhere past five games against the Boston Bruins. The Bruins have Toronto's number. It's like, who's your daddy? Your daddy is the Boston Bruins. They just cannot beat this team, Andrew. It's just plain and simple. Um I joke around about how the series will end. If Toronto has to play Boston, it's a seven-game series. It's done in three because it is just done. You just they they can't beat them. I don't know what it is. It's in the fiber of their being. Whatever. It's uh, they just cannot beat the Boston Bruins. So uh, that was uh, wasn't a short answer. I'm sorry. I, I kind of went off there, but we appreciate <laughs> those ones. The Leafs and Florida in the first round of the playoffs and then all those schmucks that were outside of the Scotiabank arena yelling, we won Florida last year and you got them. 
for five games. And then you got uh, the golf course in Florida for the rest of the uh, NHL playoffs. That's the series I want to see. They'll get a chance to get their revenge. It's, it's how the playoffs work. Yeah, you know, you get your revenge. They got the revenge against Tampa Bay last year, and now they'll have to get the revenge against the Florida Panthers. Carm, uh, we have a breaking special uh, that just got released, just got dropped over at wagertalk.com just before we wrap the show up here. Under $6 a day, a 90-day special, 90-day all-sports special available for all of us here at wagertalk.com. An unbelievable. And right now we've got the remainder of college hoops. We've got NBA playoffs coming up, NHL playoffs coming up. We've got UFC every weekend. We've got soccer, Champions League's really heating up. We've got so much going on right now. Originally eight forty nine, you can get a ninety day pass right now for five thirty nine. It's a great, great, great deal at wagertalk.com. So um, great stuff there, uh, Carm. Uh, I'll get into my best bet, then throw it back to you. Uh, to close things out for us. Is that all right? Sounds good. All right. Uh, for me, guys, I do have that best bet. Uh, as I mentioned, 4% play in the NHL. And I already told you the game. It's Florida and Toronto. It's a big game, potentially a preview for the playoffs. You can grab that for just $9. Also on a 6-2 and two MLB run. Uh, really, really feeling good uh, to start this MLB season. So hopefully we can keep that going. My best bet for the show, we already broke down this game. I'm going with the Broad Street Bullies at home. We're taking the Philadelphia Flyers to get the job done over the New York Islanders. I believe they're the team uh, to keep things going. They're the team to get back on track. And this is kind of like catching two falling knives, but I just trust this Philadelphia team better. And as far as their goal production, I believe they can score against this New York team. It's given up at least three goals in nine of their last 10 games. The defense cannot be trusted for New York. And I truly believe Philadelphia gets back on track on Monday night. Guys, uh, best of luck tonight. Hopefully you join me on this wager. Carm, over to you to close things out. So, Andrew, you know, you're talking about this play. And I just wanted to mention uh, to you and, and, uh, and guys, check your starting goalies. If that's big for you. Uh, and it's important because um, uh, when making your wager, check your goalies. And I say that today because tomorrow's a huge card. Today's a big card. Tomorrow's a huge card. So all week, there's a bunch of back-to-backs all week. So the Islanders, Andrew, this is the what I wanted to mention. So the Islanders uh, are on back-to-backs. They play Philadelphia in the game that is probably the most important game that they're going to play of these two back-to-backs because they're home against Chicago tomorrow. Uh, a team that's only won seven games on the road all season. Um, They're starting Varlamov in goal tonight instead of Sorokin. And I get it, Sorokin splits are better at home than on the road, but you need your number one goalie in goal, and they're saving them for Chicago tomorrow. Patrick Waugh, a goalie himself. What are you doing, man? This is why I can't coach. This is why I would never coach, because I just don't get it. Uh, Varlamov in goal tonight in what is probably one of the biggest Islander game of the season for them instead of Sorokin. And it's uh, it's Sorokin in goal tomorrow against Chicago. So um, kudos to you. I'm going to guess that that Flyers line is probably going to go up about uh, 10 cents, if not more. And I'm looking at it right now, and it is now 125 uh, on the Wager Talk live line. So action coming in on Philadelphia after that starting goalie was named. Anyways, guys. Monster slate tomorrow. Wager talk today coming up uh, shortly. I will be on the show discussing two more games that we didn't discuss today. Prez is back from his ninth or tenth vacation of the year already. Uh, he'll be on the show tomorrow. Uh, three big games. We appreciate all the comments from you guys. Hit that like button, please, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Let us know who your best bet is um, on tonight's uh, card, and we'll see you tomorrow for myself, Andrew, Dan. And the Wager Talk staff, good luck.